All right, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream where I'm going to... Today's effect is going to be a chain link fence that's get, that gets melted similar to yesterday's project using geometry node simulations for the buffer and all that. It could be done with dynamic paint, but I don't want to deal with that at the moment. So I'm just going to do it the geonodes way. It'll be simpler. So let me try making a chain link fence, and hopefully this actually goes well. Because uh, this could be go very easily or very, very difficult. We'll see. So I'll start out with a separate XYZ node. Also, I'm trying a new microphone setup, so we'll see how that goes, if it sounds good. It's just much, much closer to my face. So if you hear any, like, well... Any, like, breathing noises, please let me know. Okay, so there's that. That seems pretty good for, you know, the wavy pattern. And now I'm going to add that to there, but I need to multiply it to affect the gradients. Oops. So we can see that that is kind of working. So that's kind of a chain link pattern. I need to make sure I keep this organized because I know for a fact that this can get very complicated very, very fast. So I will try to... Hmm, yeah, let's use another sign. Let's, um, how does that look? I think that could work. Because I'll have one going one way, and then an, another pattern going another way. Yeah, I think I think that I think that'll work. I just need to. Yeah. So that's one pattern, and I'll just collapse the nodes that are not. They have no settings inside of them, just to make it cleaner. So I like that, but I also think there should be here. Let's put that in a frame. I'm going to have a duplicate version, which has the opposite pattern. So we have this pattern and this pattern. Now I need to combine them in an interesting way. So I'll try using a maximum to overlay them. That's something. Actually, wait a second. I should have used, instead of making it like that, I should make this a cosine. Let, let's see what happens there. Is that... Well, that is interesting. I want it to be offset so that when it goes up, the other one goes down. Like that, except like offset by half. So I think the way to do that is... Actually... Huh. That's the only way to do it? Hmm. Intr Wait a second. Yeah, no, that seems to be one of the only ways to do it. Well, let me play around with this to try to make it work right. And again, I'm just duplicating the node group. Yeah, it feels like... Nope. So these are essentially the same with only the set to a negative. Hmm. Just a tad disappointed by that. Actually, wait a second. I can make this a lot simpler by just subtracting from there and getting rid of all those nodes. There we go. A ton simpler for the inverse effect. Not bad. I can divide this by two to see if we get a different... Actually, no, that, that's not quite the one that I want, but it's fine. I want to make this as simple as possible, which, when making procedural textures, and it isn't exactly... Easy. Double the frequency. Yeah, I could try that. Yeah, let me let me do that. So divide by two. If I have to make the Oh wow. Yeah, I divided that by two, did I not? Yeah, no, that doesn't seem to work all too well. Yeah, so maximum. But there's another thing that I could use. Since I have the sign pattern doing the up, down, up, down, up, down, I can multiply the output to reflect that. So let me do that. 
multiply and then if I plug that into there we can see that well something happens but I think I need to map the range because a sine wave gives you an output of one or a negative one I want it to be ah okay there we go that's a little bit better I'm not sure I'm getting the right version okay let's do that I may need to invert this again for the bottom one but we will see yeah okay so i need to flip that around for this one that kind of looks like a chain link fan offense but something is still very off about it i think i need to offset the spline for specifically that one so let me duplicate this and then add Again, this is a more complicated material, so this is going to be not exactly the most elegant thing you've ever seen in your life. Huh. Whoa, oh, that is very trippy. Wow. Well, that's a whole shader in and of itself. Okay, zero looks like that. Not good. This looks like that, which... It feels like there's something there, but it, it it's not entirely right. If I change this to 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and vice versa... Um... Something's... Hmm... Still very much incorrect. Okay, let's take another look at this. Like that kind of, it's starting to look right, but it looks very weird. Let's see. Hmm. For that, oh, for that question regarding the fluid simulation, I did use the buffer technique, which you would be able to see in the stream. I think I mentioned that several times because of the issues that were present of the, sorry, I'm a little distracted. Because the that branch did not have the simulation node. So yes, I did use... Why is that so weird? I used the buffer technique due to that limitation. Now that... That seems like half correct. Do I need to multiply this by two? Hmm... Okay, that is looking closer. That's looking very far. That's looking closer. But, like, that's a pattern. I, I don't know if it's the right one, but it, it's kind of there. Let me uh, play around with it a bit more. Actually, let me try multiply. Oh, wow. Whoa, okay. Okay. That I I that is trippy. That is extremely trippy. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I guess that could pass for a chain link fence, but that is the trippiest chain link fence I've ever seen in my life. So let me, well, those both use the same sign. Actually, what if this one was a cosine? Cosine is the inverse of this uh, sign. Again, extremely trippy, but not what I want. One. Okay, let's just go and flip this back over to there. 
Let's collapse those two multiplies and flip these around so that the lines are nice and organized. Bring this over to here, put this in a frame. So this part I need to label. This will just be uh, waves. This part is what uh, inverse wave. Yeah, wave. Inverse wave. Wave. And then this is. I guess this will be fade. So fade. And then those two do what they're supposed to. And then okay, that got even more. Tri How did that get more trippy? I didn't. Oh, that's why. Interesting. Math is extremely interesting and confusing. Let's try 1.5. What happens then? Another very interesting pattern. Just stumble, just stumbled upon it. Let's uh, change that to 3. Another very, very interesting pattern. It's so cool. I, I need to save... I'm going to save this version. It's not correct to a chain link fence, and I know people in the future are going to be commenting about the right way to do it, which, yeah, that's good. But, yeah. Like, this feels the most chain link fence so far. And I think I need to pi divided by 2? No. Pi divided by 4, essentially. Hmm. What if I used a smooth maximum instead of a maximum? What if... Well, that just kind of blurs it. Not that wonderful. And that's what minimum looks like. Okay, let's just leave it at maximum. Collapse it there. So that's the no tree. Not pretty. But not the worst one I've made. Not great, not horrible, as I would describe it. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty messy. I'm. That looks like well, more of a woven basket. I do like this version quite a bit. Hmm. So it does the over, under, over, under, over, under, but it seems that there's just too many of them. So if I were to, yeah, let's half this amount and this amount, just so that there's less of them. And then I should offset. Hmm. Let's try adding to this one. Oh my goodness, that is extremely uncomfortable to look at. Hmm. Well, I think that's good for now. Let's move on to the melting uh, version. Let's bring that back to what it was. Yeah. Accurate, no, but good enough. Maybe I'll scale up the UV map being used. So scale. I need the UV map for both of these. And I'll just leave that there. Now that can be done like that. I can use a greater than for the alpha. So greater than. Let's log that into the alpha. So I'll need to change this to. Well, Eevee takes quite a bit to compile. Is my audio good, by the way? I think it should be, but I just want confirmation that you're not getting any, like, breathing sounds or anything else through there. Oh, that's an interesting pattern. But that's the one I'm going for. That's something. It, it's just off. 
I'll worry about that another time. So, bump. Audio seems good. Very, very nice. So, yeah. If I made the metal as a mesh, I know I could do that easily. So yeah, it's, it's not right, but it's not bad. Oh, I know what the problem is. With chain link fences, the, they're supposed to be like a little spiral in between these. Because it twists around. That's why it's feeling super wrong. Ah... Okay, that that I I understand. So it should be a little like I if I wanted to make this completely right, I would put like a little shape in there that looks like the metal was twisted over itself several times. I could do something like that. It's a it's a very interesting material. Like that. Ooh, that is super decorative. Ooh. Well, that's going in my uh, asset pack. Very nice. Okay, so now let's uh, let's add in some geometry notes. Now that we got our chain link fence thing, which uh, should I put this into a group? I think that may be warranted, especially since it is so incredibly <laughs> ugly. Actually, wait a second. Let me, if I use a math node, and I said it's like multiply add, I may be able to just make this work in a smaller capacity. So add one, multiply by 0.5. Does that do the same thing? Not exactly. Add two. That the wrong one. Interesting look. Uh, make it a point five and then add. Mm, nope, that is not the way. Now eh, let's just use the map range. It's simpler. And then maybe I'll squeeze the uh, the maximum in the middle, just so that it takes up less space. Yeah, not the prettiest node setup, but it does its job well enough. Good enough. Even though I could push it just a little bit farther. There we go. Okay. And then I could also... Ah, okay, so how would I make this thinner? We have that, and I would just, like, color ramp it? Is that the way? So we have that. Wait, that's not right. Or is it? Am I only supposed to add to one of these? Is that the issue? Sorry if this isn't the most entertaining uh, ones of these, but I want to figure this out. Okay, let me let me try this again, just with another a different offset version. So this one, let's make sure this one is as it should be. So this one. There should be an up. Oh, wait a second. I know what's up. The problem is this is aligned for every single one where it should not be. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So this should be inverted for every single, like, um, thing. So after one unit, it flips. And then it'll flip again. Then it'll flip again. So how do I do that? Um, actually, that might be simpler than I thought. So if I do that... I was wrong. 
I need that sign in there. And that did not do what I wanted it to. So we have that. Then that. Okay, no. Yeah, no, that should do its job. Okay, let me try more things. I, I, sh I should just move on, but I want this to be perfect, even though I know I can't do that. As you guys can clearly see. So let me try multiplying that by that. Oh wait, I need that map range in there as well. So twist, uh, tons of twisting wires. But you could kind of not at all see what I'm trying to go for. 60. Hmm. Take a look at the output. Yeah, no. Okay, let's let's pass on that. I'll figure out a, another way to do it. Oh wait, I broke it. Oh no. Oh, that's because that part just isn't connected. Okay. Why do I feel... Hmm. Alright, okay, let's do the geometry nodes part so that we can get the melting part. Okay, so geometry nodes. Since I have access to simulation nodes in this build, I'm going to make it so that in proximity to this empty, it will cause a gradient to occur, and then that gradient will fade over time. So simulation output, simulation input. I'm going to store a named attribute, which this will be, uh, I'll just say heat. And I'll have another named attribute, which is he as well. So with this loop, um, I'll make it so that only in proximity to the empty will value be added. And then I'll have to do a thing to subtract the value like 0 0.05 every single frame. So that should work, except I'm going to clamp it at 0 and 1. So that can't go above that. So let's do a distance from that empty and the position that should work and then a map range to go and make it so that if it's within one meter it'll start glowing so let's go into the shader editor and look at the attribute which is heat and i need to do one last thing before we get this going i need to subdivide this plane so that there's actual geometry for geonodes to work on the same thing you would have to do the same thing if there was the um if you were using dynamic paint. So here we can see that this is happening and when I remove this, it should be fading a bit faster than that. Ah, I plugged in the wrong one, okay. So this will be subtract 0.5, there we go. But actually, wait, I don't want it to fade because you can't unmelt the fence. So maybe I'll have two versions of this one for the part that's melted and then one for the heat yeah that might be a good idea one version where it just keeps all the data and doesn't subtract whatsoever and one for the temporary heat which will fade over time so let me set this within 0.5 there we go so we can see that's happening it's doing well maybe i should have a little bit of blur let's try that blur Let's set it to 0.1. This will act way too fast. Not the worst. So let's do 0.25. Yeah, that seems more like metal being warmed up. Well, let's do that. Let me put this into a nice frame. Bring it down. And yeah, the rest of this stuff should be good. Again, I'll add in that other part later if it's needed, which it probably will need to be. So let me hide all the unused sockets for that. Okay, let's take another look. So this will be for the emission strength. So let me use a map range. 
or here to say, hey, make it super duper bright where that part is. So as we can see, it's already working. So that here we can see it's there and then it fades over time, which is nice. And now I'll probably need to switch this to the like permanent attribute, if that makes sense. But the part where it is, it will multiply the alpha by zero. So I need to change that to zero and one. Because right now it is regenerating the, uh, the chain link fence, which as you could imagine, we do not want. The metal should not regenerate, at least not like that. And also, I want to mix, let's do a linear, yeah, linear light. I'm going to mix this gradient into there so that we get some, there we go, some different stuff happening. And actually, wait a second, that's not bad. Which mode? Yeah, I don't like that. That's not how it should be. This should be a subtract. There we go, okay. So it still kind of appears just to make it a little bit rougher, not perfect around the edges, but then we get stuff that is completely disconnected. So, oh yeah, no, that's good. Just a little bit to make it different enough. Even though right there it's still... I'll adjust it accordingly. Yeah, there that is, looking pretty good. But this, uh, this metal is looking a little bit too bright, so let me darken it by a bit. Again, I need to make it thinner, which I'll do later. Oh, wait, that gradient, yeah, that looks pretty good. So yeah, I just need to make that permanent gradient, which should be fairly easy. So geometry node, I'm just going to make heat two, which will just be, let me move this over and move this back. Control J. So heat two will just be heat. And then I will add the uh, previous heat into there. Okay, so heat two. Wait a second, why is it not? Okay, heat two plus heat. Which means that it'll just keep adding to this all the time and never get rid of it. Which if I turn on clamp, then that will mean that it will not go above one. So I'll make this heat two, which as I move this around, we should see, yes, it'll never go back. No, only delete. Wonderful. I shall move this around so that we can see a little bit more of it, just so that's a little bit more accurate. Even though this is way too big at the moment and I should restrict it even more. Here we go. Oh, that's looking much better. Oh yeah, look at that. And now I just need to apply a little bit of noise to the gradients, which shouldn't be too difficult. So yeah, now almost 30 minutes in and the effect is now pretty much complete. So I'll do that, but for the main heat gradient, I need to add in a little bit of noise to make it just work a little bit better. Maybe I'll, yeah, I'll try to subtract from in there as well, just to... Ah, that gives, gives it a bit of depth, but maybe I want it to be the opposite. Where, oh, wait a second. That's a little bit of a problem. Need to constrict. That, so that doesn't overspill. Yeah, no, that's a bit too much. Hmm. Let's see, the heat value... Maybe I shouldn't have restricted it as much. Because it just goes up and then it's just gone. Maybe I'll delay it a bit more. So in the geometry node editor, I will divide the heat by 2 while it's being input so that it doesn't quite... Yeah, or maybe 4 even just so that it's even slower to be to melt through everything. Yeah, not bad.
Hmm. Let's put that into a frame. Maybe if I divide it by 10, would that be better? And another thing I want to do is to decrease the subtraction time. Actually, what if I just turned up the blur by a lot? Yeah, no, the blur being up like that, not a good idea. Let me reduce it. Yeah, not bad. Maybe I should apply noise to the heat mask. Would that be better? Hmm. Would it, though? I don't want to rely on the underlying geometry because I don't want it to be super duper heavy. Yeah, and also, let me just compact this into a node group. Make group. This will just be... Chain link. Chain links. Yeah, there we go. And maybe I'll put in a, uh, a value for the scale. Just so that I can change it. On the fly. Wow. Yeah, maybe I'll have it at four. Yeah, those are too common. I need to I need to shrink them down by a bit. So let me use a map range for that to maybe reduce it. Hopefully I can whoops, that nope, that was the right value. Okay. Can I reduce it? Yes I can. I can make it skinnier. Good. 0.5. Let me do the same for the other one. Again, you could just use a texture and then get around all of this annoying stuff. But since I decide to do everything in Blender procedurally, I gave myself a lot more pain. Yeah, that's looking more... Again, here it is. It seems to look more like a proper chain link fence. There we go. That's that's a bit better. A little harder to see. So let me just uh, bump up the roughness a little bit more. There we go. That's That looks better. Maybe I'll make it just a little bit thicker. Uh, 0.6. There we go. And I think some borders on this would make it look a lot better. But for now, that's not bad. But yeah, let me try implementing the noise to disrupt the heat. So let me do that. Instead of having this there, I'm going to have a noise texture with the UV map. UV map. There we have it. Plug it into there. So add. No, we want this to subtract. No, 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 no. Subtract. Hmm. So let's turn up. Wow, okay. E, that is uh, not affecting it nearly as much as I wanted it to. That's not good. Like, I should be able to linear light it without the fear of it spreading to everywhere else. Like, that's that's a big issue that I'll need to figure out. Like, that does randomize it a bit more. Not quite as bad as it was. Hmm. But not having it there is fine enough already. But having that a little bit more texture, well, I think that's a bit too much, if I'm being honest. But we can see it's still overspilling, which I am not happy about. Let me reduce that even more. Oh, hello everyone. I did not notice that there were 58 people watching this currently. Hello. Uh, I am... 
I don't know why you guys are here at the moment, but hey, if you could learn something, I'm happy about that. The effect is pretty much done. But it is, uh, it's going well. Yeah, I'll change this to a spherical one. Let's change that to 0.5. So the one thing that I probably should do is... Oh, wait a second. Let me turn up the bloom on this one, just so that's really... Oh yeah, that's looking better. <laughs> Yeah, the fade off needs to be better, but not bad. And then heat two, let me restrict that even more to like point, point 0.5 and more like that because it's clamped anyway. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So should I just make this a greater than as the multiplying factor? Yeah, let's use a greater than. So that I can see exactly what point it stops doing that. So we can see how much this mask affects it. So let me just plug that into there. This will just make it a lot simpler. Actually, this should be a less than. There we go. Very nice. Much better. So now we get all those jagged edges doing what they should be doing. Let me uh, turn that off. Oh, and do you guys want to see the Viewport Compositor in all of its glory? Because uh, that is quite good for something like this with lots of glow. So let me go into the Compositing tab, Use Nodes. I'm going to use the Glare node, which one thing that I found out is that um, Fog Glow doesn't work in the Viewport Compositor. But Streaks, Fog, uh, Streaks, Ghosts, and Simple Star do work. So let me turn on the Viewport Compositor to Always. We can see that we now have this very nice and very, very shiny bloom effect happening, which is cool. But let me turn up uh, color modulation and then uh, maybe change the fade to be as high as possible. Yeah, so that's a little more gentle, not quite as in your face bloom. And then the mix, if I tone that down just to, so that you can see it, but not, you know, so that it doesn't overpower all your senses. Actually, wait, now you can't even see it. So let me change it back up. There we go. So now you can see it. It's it's a bit too much, a bit more like the uh feels like an Instagram filter, but you know, it could be useful. If I switch this to ghosts, we can see it gives this effect. Which that is that's pretty cool. Wow. Travels along when you move the camera, but yeah. It's so different seeing it with the um, in the viewport while you're moving around because I never got the full scope of what the ghosts would look like. Color modulation is a very good idea in this case. Like, look at that. It's so cool. That's my favorite one to play around with. And then Simple Star is like streaks, but worse then fog glow doesn't work unfortunately look at that actually does fog glow work when bloom is off no okay let me uh switch back to that i'm not gonna keep the uh the streaks like this except maybe if i can make it subtle enough Yeah, no, there's no really subtle way of doing that. Uh, let me use ghosts, because this does appear with cameras. It's just a lot less noticeable, so it's like just a little bit. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, just kind of noticeable is good, but not quite as in your face. Oh, no, it's... It's coming to burn up everything. Yeah. And for the burning value, I just need it to be a little bit different. Because I need to darken everything else around it. 
let's go into the geometry node editor. Maybe I should, instead of dividing, maybe I'll use a greater than so that it's all snapped at like 0.5, which will make it so that... Yeah, there we go. That's a, that's a little bit better. Except I need to really keep this on the plane or else it will not look right. Oops. Hmm. A little too square now, but maybe I'll just use a map range instead. That will probably yield better results. So map range. Let's do that. Connect that into there. So I'll just make it so that it'll call the lower values, but still keep the higher ones. And I'll change the addition to 0.1. There we go. So something like that. I may need to... Let's go into the shader editor. The fall off, it's all right, but it could be better. So if I use, say, a power node, I may make the, the gradient a bit better. Let's, uh, let's see. Is that helping it or hurting it? Let's see. That just makes the fade a little less harsh. Uh, shift Y. You know, it's still okay. Hmm. All right, let me undo that. Oh my gosh. And reel that back in by... Oh, actually, no, it did look better then. Just a bit more subtle. And there it goes. More testing is needed. Okay, let's... So that's like that. And it fades too quickly. It fades way too quickly. So geometry node editor... Maybe I'll have this so that instead of subtracting, it divides by two over time before the new stuff gets added. So it'll divide by two so that it'll never actually hit zero. It'll just, that's, I think that's like exponential decay or something along those lines. Hmm. I think I messed it up. Subtract. Let's have that at 0 0.015 again. Okay, now that feels better. Mm hmm. But it still fades way too quickly, so let me reduce that to something more like that. Oh, it feels like it's burning now, which, hey, that may enhance the effect. Okay. Let me reduce that even more from the actual deletion process. Because I don't... Why does it look like it's adding... Like, it keeps going everywhere. Okay, let's take a look at the heat attribute. Yeah, so it's growing. That should not be happening. Like, if I remove this from the equation... Okay, yeah, it should be getting less. Okay, so it is, it is working. Yeah, so that's the heat map right there. And now let's take a look at the heat 2, which is the permanent heat. The stuff that goes there and then never goes away, so that the chain link fence does not regenerate. Because that would be very odd. Okay, let's put this in a frame. I think it's pretty much ready to go. I think some discoloration, permanent discoloration, uh, in the chain link fence would be good. So I'll just do that. Color ramp. 
do this, but then just do a little hue shift. Set that to ease. I want it to be like that, but a little more, let's say, yeah, a little more purple towards the middle. So if we do that, we should see it's a bit bright right now, but let's say a little more, yeah, just a little tinged, I guess. Yeah, that adds to the realism, I guess. Now, what's the right beginning hue for this? A little, nah, just gray. Gray's good. And then let's change this to a darker, so it looks properly charred. I think that's good. Proper shader effect. Let me put this into a frame. And put this one into a frame. Yeah, this... Okay, so this should be down here. This should be up here. This is for the opacity. Oops. Put both of these inside of that frame. Sorry that I'm messing up the controls. And then this is just for the bump. So that could just stay as is. Very nice. I think that turned out pretty well. So now let me just motion capture some... Uh... A generic motion. G, shift, Y. Okay, so. There we go. Bring this over so that starts off a bit better. Yeah, I'll need to change the fall off on the thing because when when that happens, I, I don't like that. It's just too harsh, so I need to severely bump up that change the values like I want the fade I want that fade to happen which it, it it's actually doing huh so well, let me bump that up even more there we go maybe let's change the hue again what's a good hue for this more I'm thinking more of a reddish orange let's take a look I'd say that's looking pretty good. Pretty good. But I think the heat is still fading way too quickly. So let me go in the Geometry Node Editor. We're past 45 minutes. But it's looking quite good. So, okay, yeah, the heat is lingering. That's good. And it does look like it's spreading, which I'm not sure I'm happy about. Because the lower values should be cold from the permanent heat map. Okay, yeah, now it's not entirely spreading. No, it is. Why, why is it spreading? Clamp, is that, cl yeah, that is clamped. Is this one clamped? Oh, it's not. Okay, that explains it. That makes it so that the heat would just keep building and building and never go back down. Okay, that's better. Because you can't keep adding to heat when there's nothing there. So I can reduce this even more, and now it won't uh, ruin everything. Maybe I should keep that exposed, because the clamp is an operation, technically, that's happening. So yeah, just like that, let me move this back so that's not in the frame. And let me slow down this animation. So I could turn up the blur amount, just so that it does spread a little bit more. Okay, a little bit, not, not too much. 0.13. There we go. And I could even, now that it's not as big of an issue, tone that up a bit more. A, a bit too effective now, so let me reduce that. Yeah, no, that seems to be good. Maybe if I just made this a lightsaber, it would be good. We got to 103 viewers? Not on my end, I don't think. I think the max it hit was like 69. But yeah, and since this is a chain link fence, or geometry for a chain link fence, I could scale it up. 
and make as much of it as I want. Let's do 0.5. Yeah, so what shape should this be? Because I could make this. Let's try a sphere. Okay, and let's move it so that it can affect. Yep, it works on a sphere. Pretty nicely, I'll say. And this can work with any base uh, texture. So it could be a chain link fence, or it could be, say, let's try a checker texture just for giggles. So let's do that, just a checker texture. Why does the checker texture look better? <laughs> uh, but yes, you can see it works on a checker texture. What does a magic texture look like? Magic. So a magic texture, depth zero, and let me use a color ramp to constrain it. Take a look. Ah, well, that could have saved me some time earlier. Let's take a look. So you just basically put in any pattern you want into the system. And it just works. Yeah, that would have saved me a lot of time, and it basically looks the same to the uh, as the other one. Did you create geometry based on a texture? Um, no. The chain links, I made a special node for it, but it's too complicated. It's not even accurate. So I made something overly complicated, which, in the end, it didn't even matter. I think there's a song about that. Uh, but yeah. So I could have just used one of these, and it would have been just as good. If not better. Yeah, you, you see that? That's basically the same effect. We don't get the same, you know, pseudo-weaving pattern as we did with that one, but it's good enough. I would just put some noise in there to break up the uh, the shape a bit. We can make this uh, like a screen door effect as well. Which actually, it... Like... It, it looks half transparent, even though there's no actual half transparency with it. Yesterday, you gave a brief summary on Geonodes. Did you say it was assigning data, manipulating data, and then setting the data? Uh, I used a little terms that were a little bit different. It was getting data, manipulating data, and then setting the data. So, yeah, and I plan on making a little short about that. I need to just... It's very condensed, so I'm just going to do like a 30-second short about it. Just as a kind of intro of, oh, geometry nodes in a nutshell. It's getting data, manipulating data, setting data, and showing that off with the set position sorry set position nodes sometimes i speak a little bit too fast for my brain but yeah there's that i can only repeat this uh, animation so many times but this is uh this is good i'm i'm happy with it so let me set this to around 40 yeah i just need to find a good like i think a curved texture would look better on this but then again how would I stick the the empty onto the geometry oh wait another thing I could do this is gonna be a little bit wait a little bit weird but it would work hmm I could oh yeah I could do this so one weird thing that you can do is say, if I were to, this is going to use Geonodes, but it'll be interesting, I assure you. Let me do that and rotate this into place. So now, and delete this geometry node. So it's just the bent version of this. But if I use geometry nodes after the simulation, I could do something interesting where I use a a set position set position node set position 
And I bring this other mesh into here and sample its position. Come on, you could you could do it. There we go. So I'll just use sample index because they have the same geometry technically. So index. This is you know impractical, but you know it works. So I'll do that. So now that's copying that. So I'll hide the reference object. So now technically the mesh is being calculated over there, but it will apply over there. So I could have whatever surface I want, but it's being calculated here, and this is just a post effect, which is uh, kind of cool if you ask me. So that's like the simulation mesh, and then I just transfer the location. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so we're coming up on an hour right now, and I think that's a good place to end this stream. Thank you all for watching. This effect turned out good. I'm not going to keep the tra uh, position transfer, but it was a good little test. Cool little demonstration. But yeah, thank you all for watching. This effect turned out pretty much exactly as planned, minus the pattern, the chain link pattern, but I could just get an image online. That would have saved a lot of time. But yeah, or I could just use a texture like this. All right. Any last questions? Ask them now and I'll go over them. If not, then I'll just uh, end the stream and uh, go about my day. And also, wow, that was unexpected, but you could get little spheres that do the same thing. Interesting. What if I set that to like five? Oh wow, that is. That looks like a chain link fence to me, even though it is very odd. Let me. What happens if I set to like eight? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, five seems to be kind of the the limit for that. Four, dripping metal next. Uh, making, oh, whoa, that's a different pattern. Uh, making the metal drip, that would be very difficult to do. Because it's a texture, and how would I make a texture emit geometry? Yeah. I kind of like that this design, even though, you know, it's not physically accurate whatsoever. It's cool. So maybe I'll have that for like a different one. But I think this one kind of gives the most chain link fence look at a glance, even if it's not quite accurate. Uh, three. Sparks, yeah, that could be done fairly easily with my particle node system. But yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you all for watching. I'll be seeing you next time. Maybe I should make that part glowy. Where that part is just maybe yeah all right i'll see you all next time